Hello everybody and welcome back to the experimental slash alternative wood finishing series. This video is going to be a bit of a quick one because we had this wax coming to Axminster the other day called Verdigree Wax. Looks pretty cool, I want to mess around with it, so let's get going. So this wax has kind of like a greeny look to it and it's made to add to sort of patina to the surface that you apply it to. So to test this finish I've got three different surfaces here. I've got the silver leaf with the patina that we did in the first video of this series so if you haven't watched that the link is in the top corner to watch that it's a fun old video. The second sample is going to be the scorched oak sample so been burnt and it's got a black wax over it as well. Really nice texture so I'm hoping this wax is going to kind of fill that grain a little bit and add some nice contrast and I've got a bit of end grain as well just to see what happens. So, do I put gloves on for this? There we go. Verdigree wax, look at the color of that. So the reason I picked these surfaces is because they are kind of different. We've got a perfectly smooth one here from the gilding, a bumpy one from the scorched, and then we've got sort of end grain where the tubes within the wood are going up. So different samples here, and I'll probably try it on just a standard bit of ash as well, just to see what happens. This is the one that I have the least high hopes about. Oh my Lord. I don't think this is really going to do much <laughs> apart from lift up that silver leaf, to be honest. Also, this surface, because there's no bumps or anything in it, it doesn't look like there's actually anything for the wax to actually grab into. So, um, yeah, it's just lifting up the silver leaf. Damn, I thought I'd be able to get like a sort of double patina thing on here. Ah, oh, look. Yeah, strip the surface. That hasn't worked. Okay, let's move straight on to the second sample, which is the Scorched Oak. Now this one I have very high hopes for. I think this should look pretty cool, considering we've got that textured surface. So I'm gonna really try and pack it into that grain, make sure it's properly bottomed out in those bits that we burn out in the scorching process. And if you haven't seen that video, then the link is in the top corner for that as well. Right, so then we'll leave that to harden and then we'll buff it off later. I think in the meantime, let's just apply it to some of these samples here. So end grain to start with. Oh, that's looking pretty cool. That is looking very cool. Instantly that is filling all the grain in there. Oh, amazing. Okay, so we'll buff that off later. So we know it's gonna work really well on end grain. Let's see how it works on long grain without any texture on there, just a simple flat surface. Now it would be better if you wire brush this surface first to remove all of the soft grain and give this something to bite onto. Like a brass brush or something would be ideal, but I don't have one, unfortunately. I completely forgot to pick one up. But we'll just smother that over the surface and let that harden and then we'll buff it off later. Now I've got another bit of ash here that has a bandsaw edge on it, so it's not planed or anything. It's still pretty rough, so we'll see how this turns out as well. I reckon this will add some pretty cool linear patterns to it. Oh, it's actually not staying in the grain as much as I thought it would, to be honest. Yeah. If I just buff it a little bit lighter add less pressure to it. We'll go across the grain a second bit. Certainly adds an interesting surface to it. Just gotta make sure that you buff it off quite lightly or else you just end up scraping it out of the grain in there. Pretty interesting. Not entirely sure where I'd use it, but yeah, looks all right, doesn't it? So, end grain. That looks pretty cool, I like that. Do you know what, I kind of wish that I scorched the end grain on here and then tried to fill it up because the contrast on that would be insane. Yeah, that's really nice, I like that. Now let's see how these turn out. I'm not entirely sure what's gonna happen with this one. I feel like I'm probably just gonna scrape most of it off. Right, so yeah, if you put it on long grain that is smooth and planed and everything, then it's not gonna do a whole lot other than turn it green <laughs> by this sample here. Yeah, it kind of shows up that sawn texture, but it doesn't really doesn't really pop against the <laughs> green background now. Now, I can't just end this video there. We haven't done enough. I'm going to try this on some burr veneers that I've got knocking around. 
Not entirely sure what this one is. It's kind of a ready orange color and I think, I need the key, I think I've got some walnut there knocking down here somewhere. There you go, let's see what happens to these. So I think just to add a bit of contrast to this, I'm gonna put some oil on them first. I'm not gonna wait for the oil to dry because they're just samples, but I wanna maximize this effect. So quick bit of tongue oil on there, should work just fine. And the reason I thought burrs would be pretty cool is because they're kind of a mixture of long grain, end grain, there's all sorts going on. You've got knots and things in here, so it's really gonna be a completely random texture. The only challenge being that um, it's gonna be difficult not to shatter these because they're incredibly fragile. They're just veneers. So I'm not gonna wait for the wax to harden or anything on there because it's gonna be challenging to buff off otherwise. And as a result, I'll probably end up tearing the veneers. So I'll put it on and then buff it off straight away. Hoping it wouldn't do that. I was hoping it would just come straight off and leave it in all of the uh, open pores and things in here. But it has just, again, dyed it green. Probably haven't got high hopes for this other one either now. Right, I'm gonna try it on the other side of these bits of veneer, but I'm gonna seal them first in hopes that the wax doesn't soak into the sort of, well, to all of the wood, it's only gonna soak into the sort of pits and things like that. Right, so it's got about three coats of sealer on there. Let's see what this does. I don't think it's gonna do much different, but it's worth trying in there. Ooh. It is slightly different, actually. Yeah, is it? Nah, don't think it is. Wait, no, I'm lying. Keep buffing it. Ah. <laughs> Okay, that's interesting. So the sealer has actually worked in this case and it is only filling, oh my Lord, it is only filling certain areas of this grain, which is actually looking all right, to be honest. Yeah, it is sort of working. So there we go, that is verdigris wax. So pointer, if you're to use this, definitely seal the surface before you use it because otherwise you're just gonna paint the wood on here green and it might not be the effect you're looking for. If you're just wanting to fill the grain and emphasize and add more contrast to the overall piece, you're gonna need to seal it and then it's only gonna soak into certain areas and you'll get an effect similar to what we got on this scorched bit here, which looks really nice and what we got on one side of this walnut burr, whereas on the opposite side where we didn't seal it, it just turned it green. So a bit of sealer on there, it would definitely look better if you sanded it, if you added more layers of sealer, maybe if you had like a wipe on one as opposed to a spray. But yeah, that's definitely something I'm gonna be messing around with at some point. I think I could create some pretty cool effects from that. But yeah, there we go. That is verdigris wax. See you in the next video.